I'd like to tell you about a great plugin that I found for X-Plane that gives you the ability to have three accurate views on your three screens instead of the stretch view you get. It's called the Fly Elise from the Netherlands and the program actually allows you to generate three correct visual images to place on your three monitors in lieu of the stretch division that you get with a uh, surround system using X-Plane. So each one of the screens has a correct view from edge to edge compared to uh, the widely stretched image that you get with a standard X-Plane using uh, the NVIDIA surround where the edge images, anything outside of midway on the uh, side monitors is grossly stretched. Now it uses something called Immersive Display Pro. It's about 150 euros and it's a software that is used mostly for people who do uh, projections on curved surfaces. But it also allows you to correct the uh, views using a plugin. Simply select, load the plugin, select multi view and it will show you a configure menu. You can also enable and disable. You can see that it allows me to put the coordinates for the left monitor at 00 in uh, 1920 by 1080, a 315 degree heading and a 45 degree field of view. That's 45 degrees left of center. Now the center monitor of course is spaced over 100, 1920 and has 0 degrees, 45 degree field of view and uh, again full HD. The right monitor is set up the same way with a uh, 45 field of view. Now here's multi view off and you can see a row of tr the rows of trees are fairly close and now we have multi view on and you can see the same trees are quite far away. Here again multi view off you can see that row of trees I'm zooming in on there kind of at about a pointing at about 2 o'clock 1.30 2 o'clock with a large tree to the left. Now here's that same set of trees correct with the correct orientation poke about one degree, one degree. Here's the windsock. Notice the windsock is much further forward using this surround system. The uh, runway markings again are corrected. Now here we have an example of how the image gets stretched towards the edge of the monitor and I'll turn the surround the uh, multi-view on here and you'll see a radical change. There you go. It off. Stretched airplanes towards the edge of the monitor with it on. Geometrically correct. Now let's look to the other side of the monitor and you can see that uh, airplane looks stretched now once it's turned off, but it looks fine when it's turned on. Now look at the frames. Uh, with the system, as you can expect, there's a decrement from about 70 frames per second. Now turning it on about 50 frames per second. Now as I taxi along here, I'm going to turn it on and off as I taxi. And you can look at the uh, building and get an idea of how it, it... It also gives you much more sense of speed because its stretched image looks closer. So here it is on. Look at the baggage carts now. Look how stretched they are and how fast we look to be moving very unrealistic once you get used to it. Again, off and back on. Look at the cargo containers there with it on. And when we turn it off, you'll see those cargo containers are much wider as they're stretched. Also the sense of speed here with it on, you would feel like we're barely moving. Okay, now let's uh, take advantage of our uh, touchscreen cockpit with Air Manager and taxi out. As I taxi out, I'm going to turn this on and off again to give you an idea of how things look. As we uh, taxi out here, I'll be looking left here shortly and give you a view. Pardon the uh, camera technique, but trying to taxi at the same time is difficult with holding my iPhone. Of course, the quality is not that great either. Here we are with it on. You see the cars look shaped normally, speed. Once we get that on, the cars are elongated and we look like we're really flying, going very fast because the image close is slowed in there. Back on, you get an idea, an idea of the view. When you have it on, the pace of the taxi seems quite normal. 
I'm going to pull onto the runway here from the intersection and make a takeoff. I'm going to try to take a view out of the right and just watch the little green and red on the corner to see when it's on and off. I don't think you'll need that to tell, but I'm going to be turning it on and off. Put a few flaps down here and we'll be ready to go. Taxi onto the runway and here we go with the uh, multi-view on. And we start rolling along. Watch how it looks like we speed up when I turn it off. There it is off. Stretched airplane now back to normal. Look at the buildings. Tower will be coming up shortly. There we go. Now stretched airplanes again. Back to normal. Stretched airplanes and we're flying. The hangars are stretched. Tower looks normal there. And we're off into the blue. I'm just going to turn this on and off a few times here. You'll get a sense that when you're flying low, it really does give you the sense when it's off that you're much faster than you really are. Look at that, looking right at the edge, everything looks geometrically correct, almost exactly up to the edge of the monitor. See the speed change as we turn that uh, multi-view off. Fast looking, stretched roads. Okay, with multi views on, it just happens that a 747 is taking off on the runway at Aspen. I don't think that happens often. It used every bit of that runway. Get a nice view there. Okay, as I taxi in now, I'm going to turn. Uh, Turn right, left onto the taxiway and, and keep the camera out the right side. And you should be able to uh, see the difference when I turn this on and off. See if you can figure it out yourself. On. As we approach our parking spot here, one final look at the Cessna to give you one last look at the effects of multi-view, the plug-in by Fly Elise. There's the Cessna with multi-view on. And with it off, there's the stretch Cessna. I'll give you my opinions in a moment. So what's my opinion of multi-view by Fly Elise? Well, first of all, I think it, it's phenomenal what it does. It used to require three separate computers driving separate versions of the uh, X-Plane program to get this kind of a view. So it's definitely worth that in that regard. I think uh, the minor frame hit is really pretty reasonable considering. I'm running a, a GTX 770 and uh, you can see that with decent, not great, but decent video settings I'm able to get a very good frame rate so I'm sure when we upgrade to the new GTX 770 or 1070s which I've got one on order, we're going to have pretty darn good uh, frame rates and I think this is workable. My only concern is that it's not compatible with 10.50 which I'm really looking forward to on X-Plane so that may be an issue in the long run if uh, they can't keep that upgraded. The other issue is that we're hoping that with X-Plane 11 that multi-view will come along and that we'll be able to operate just within X-Plane separate views in different windows. And if that comes along, this software could be rendered uh, pretty obsolete. At 150 euros, it's not cheap. And uh, it may be something that uh, people might want to think about. I will tell you that there's a 30-day trial period. That's what I'm using now to test it. 
and that may be actually worthwhile. We'll just have to see. Uh, this may actually be worthwhile in the long run, but uh, uh, I know one thing that now that I've used it, I'm really spoiled and I'm going to have trouble not using it. So I've got a feeling I may be digging deep into my pocket to come up with 150 bucks.